So it is Innovate's Terra Ultra G G G270. He actually used the carbon plated version of this shoe when he tried to break two hours on two hours? Breaking two hours on UTMB. Now that would be impressive. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Don't forget guys, if you're enjoying the content you're watching on the channel to hit that like button and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by hitting that button just down there. It only takes a second to do and it's completely free. So that's right, it costs nothing to subscribe to Run For Adventure, but it is a great way of keeping up to date with future content on the channel. Just a quick update on how the ankle rehab is going. Uh, it's improving every day and it's feeling pretty good at the moment and it looks like you guys have really enjoyed the rehab content that we've put on the channel featuring Paul Coco, my sports physiotherapist. Uh, lots of positive comments, lots of positive feedback. It sounds like you guys are finding it really useful. So there's definitely going to be more content on the way featuring Paul. So we are back with another comparison video today, but it's not head torches this time. It is running shoes we're looking at today. And in particular, it is two trail running shoes that have been designed with ultra running in mind. So it is Innovate's Terra Ultra G270 and the North Face's Vective Infinite. Both these trail running shoes have been designed to handle long distance, whether it be training mileage or race mileage. And they've also both had a lot of input when it comes to the design of them from some big names in the ultra running world. The North Face shoe had a lot of input from American ultra runner Zach Miller, but also from UTMB winner Pal Chappell. He actually used the carbon plated version of this shoe when he attempted to break 20 hours on the UTMB course last year. As as far as the Innovate shoe, it has been put through its paces by British ultra running sensation Damien Hall. Damien actually used this shoe when he broke the record on the Pennine Way last year. So that's right, he ran 264 miles in two days, 16 hours and 46 minutes on some super challenging terrain. So both shoes have some pretty impressive credentials, that's for sure. But let's find out which shoe personally for me has worked better for my trail running and maybe which one of these two shoes I'm going to be using in up and coming ultra races this year. But let's start with a few facts and figures on the two shoes first. Both shoes retail for £145 here in the UK. When it comes down to the weight of the two shoes, the Innovate shoe weighs in at 299 grams in a men's UK 10, whereas the North Face shoe weighs in at 310 grams in a UK 9.5. As far as heel offset of the two trail running shoes, the Innovate shoe has a slightly controversial zero drop on the heel so no difference between the heel and the forefoot of the shoe whereas the Vective Infinite has a, a slightly more traditional six mil heel offset. As far as the fit of the two shoes I would say the Innovate shoe sizes up a little bit on the small side that's why I went for a UK 10 in that shoe whereas the North Face shoe fits more true to size so this is a UK 9.5 and it fits like a glove. If you're the type of runner who needs or likes a lot of width in the toe box of your running shoes then I would say the Innovate definitely offers as a wider and deeper toe box. But when it comes to both uppers of the shoe, they've both given me a very good lockdown in the heel cup and a very nice specific hold around my midfoot. Working down to the two midsoles of the shoes, and they actually feel quite similar underfoot when it comes to cushioning, even though you've got that slightly deeper midsole on the Vective Infinite. They're actually both very comfortable underfoot. Both shoes also have a slight rocker motion worked into that midsole, although it's definitely more aggressive and more noticeable when it comes to the North Face shoe. And the standout difference between the two midsoles of these trail running shoes, this North Face shoe has this Vective p based plate worked into that midsole for added propulsion and protection underfoot. And rounding off the two shoes is the outsole, a very important Important part of our trail running shoes. Both shoes have a multi-directional lug pan, but the Terra Ultra has a slightly deeper lug depth of 4mm on that outsole compared to the North Face shoe, which has a 
3.5 mil lug depth. The North Face shoe is clad in the surface CTRL rubber compound, which is there to offer great levels of traction on all surfaces, whether it's wet or dry. As far as the Terra Ultra G270, the outsole is clad using the very much hyped graphene grip technology from Innovate. Um, that's there to offer great levels of grip and traction on all types of terrain, and it is claimed to be some of the most durable and some of the most grippy rubber compound found on a running shoe. So that is a quick insight into the specs and a few of the features of these two trail running shoes. But if you wanna find out any more information about the two shoes featuring in this video, we have done a full in-depth review on the channel on both shoes. I've left links in the description if you wanna check it out. Right, the next part of this video, we have broken down into three sections and we're gonna talk about the performance of these two trail running shoes and maybe which one I would pick and choose to run in. So the three sections that we're gonna discuss are upper comfort, midsize, performance and outsole grip so let's get stuck in and let's talk about upper comfort first I'd say when it comes down to the construction and the fit of the two uppers in these two trail running shoes they're actually quite similar in a lot of ways and have quite a lot of similar features so both uppers have quite a thin gusseted tongue around that midfoot just to give you that nice specific lockdown and hold so that you get no sort of lateral slippage in the shoe when it comes to the ankle collar and that heel collar again not a lot of padding or cushioning in either shoe um, I found the heel in both shoes actually very comfortable and I felt very very well locked in and held in the back end of the shoe but if I had to choose one of these shoes when it comes down to upper comfort I'd have to say the North Face shoe. The Vective Infinite definitely gave me that sort of ooh feeling. And what I mean by that, that ooh feeling is when you take the shoe out of the shoe box for the first time, you put your foot in it for the first time and you go, ooh, this is something special. I definitely got that feeling from this shoe. I put the shoe on for the first time and all I wanted to do is get running in the shoe. And it really did feel like I could have run in it all night. And like I'd been in it for a couple of months and already bedded it in. I really think it comes down to attention to detail when we're talking about the upper of the North Face shoe. The tongue in this shoe is quite thin. It's gusseted, very similar to the Terra Ultra tongue. But what the North Face have done is they've worked in little zones of padding just in the right place. So it makes that very comfortable across the top of the foot, but you still feel very well locked in and dialed into that midfoot of the shoe. A very similar story in the heel cup of the shoe as well. Not a lot of padding, very similar to the Innovate shoe, but we've got these really clever little zones of padding around that heel cup, which makes it very comfortable. But again, you feel very locked in and dialed in and very secure in the back end of this running shoe. Also the upper on the shoe, uh, very hard wearing, resilient feeling upper. You've got them Kevlar threads worked into that upper fabric as well. And then rounding it all off, you get this nice little bit of toe protection, this nice rubber bumper in the toe box of the shoe, which is a feature I always like when I'm out running on the trails. So you put all them things together and you are left with one very comfortable place to be while you're out running on the trails. Don't get me wrong, the Innovate upper was still a pretty comfortable place to be for the majority of the runs I did in the shoe. I do feel, however, it really would benefit from a, a little bit of padding in that tongue, very similar to what they've done in the North Face shoe. Just a little bit of padding in the right areas to give you a bit more comfort on the top of your foot. I did start to feel them laces through that tongue on my slightly longer runs I did in the shoe. And also round that ankle collar as well. I don't know whether it's because it's very stiff and it needs bedding in or because it comes up quite deep, but I did start to feel where them uh, laces go through the eyelets. I did start to feel that digging in a bit in the front of my foot towards the end of my longer run. So I think with a few little tweaks on that upper, a bit more padding in the tongue, it would make that Terra Ultra G270 just a little bit more comfortable. So I think because of them differences in the upper, I think it just makes the North Face shoe a little bit more comfortable, especially when you're running distance. Moving down to the midsole of these two trail running shoes, and even though they look quite different, and clearly the Vective Infinite has a slightly deeper level of cushioning in that midsole, they actually felt very similar underfoot. Both midsoles perform really well on all the terrain that I ran them on, but they really perform well on that sort of more compact trails or sections of tarmac that I ran the shoes on. They both offer that real good balance 
balance between cushioning and comfort, but then connection and ground feel to the trails under my feet. I think a really clever feature in the Innovate Terra Ultra G270 is this boomerang footbed in the shoe. When you feel the actual Powerflow Max um, cushioning in that midsole, it's actually quite dense and quite firm. But when you couple it up with that boomerang footbed, the shoe feels very plush underfoot. Even for long sections of tarmac, the shoe felt very comfortable. But for me, the biggest difference in these two shoes is the shape of that midsole. I've really enjoyed running with this more exaggerated rocker in the North Face shoe. Um, it's actually one of the best running shoe rockers that I've ever run with. It feels very easy to run in. You feel super efficient, especially in hilly areas. Um, it feels very easy to run up and down hill in this shoe. Then obviously you've got that Vective uh, P-Bax based plate worked into the midsole of the shoe. No plate in the Terra Ultra. Uh, I'm not sure whether that plate gave me any extra propulsion, but it did offer a nice level of protection underfoot. So it kind of doubled up as a rock plate um, to give you a bit more underfoot protection from rocky areas. And then a personal thing for me is the heel offset. This shoe comes with a six mil offset, which when I'm running ultras, when I'm running long races or long training runs, is kind of where I want to be on heel offset. Four, five, six mil. A zero drop shoe for me is a little bit too aggressive, especially in a long ultra race when you're going to get fatigued and you're going to be in that fatigued state for a long time. I think having a little bit of lift on the heel for me just takes a bit of tension and makes it feel a bit easier over distance. So when it comes down to midsole performance, the Vective Infinite comes out on top. Last up is outsole and the level of grip and traction that I got from the outsole on these two trail running shoes. I must say in certain environments they performed very similar. So when it was dry compact trail, rocky, wet rocky areas, tarmac, both shoes perform very well grip wise. Uh, the rubber compounds on both of these shoes feel very sticky when it is in that sort of rocky, wet, rocky environment and performed excellent when it came to tarmac and wet tarmac. But, and it is a big but, when it comes down to wet, muddy British trail running conditions, the Vective Infinite really started to struggle. I've got to say, when it came to them muddy trails, the shoe really didn't perform particularly well. Uh, I don't think this 3.5 mil lug is deep enough to sort of dig into that mud and give you that traction that is needed when it's wet and muddy on the trails. I really did have to take it very steady in all the mud that I ran the shoe in because I felt if I didn't, I was going to fall flat on my face. So I think when it comes to the outsole and the grip from this outsole, I'll the Vective Infinite. It really is set up more for them than drier months in the UK or, or drier, rockier sort of alpine trails where the performance of that grip is very, very good in them environments. However, this is not the case when it comes to the Terra Ultra G270 from Innovate. This outsole grip, the performance of this outsole grip has really impressed me. Like I said, great on rock, wet rock, wet tarmac, tarmac conditions, but I was really surprised that it's only got a four mil lug and it's not that aggressive but it was excellent in muddy conditions as well. I never doubted this shoe on any terrain that I ran it over and that's always a great thing when it comes to the outsole grip on our trail running shoes. So because of this when it comes down to outsole performance and outsole grip it has to be a big win for the Terra Ultra G270. Right so that's a bit of info in how it's felt putting good mileage in these two trail running shoes but also a bit of an insight into the things that I've really enjoyed and maybe a few of the things I feel that could be improved when it comes to the Vectra infinite and the Terra Ultra G270 but let's wrap this video up with a quick conclusion. Firstly I've really been impressed with the performance of both of these trail running shoes so far but standout features uh, one has to be the level of traction I got from this graphene grip technology outsole on the Terra Ultra G270. Um, I wasn't sure whether all the information on this grip was a bit of hype but now I've run in it it's definitely not hype this is very grippy compound indeed. I was impressed with how well it handled the dry, the rocky, the wet rocky, the tarmac, wet tarmac. Very, very capable in them environments. I wasn't sure how well it would handle the mud because of the four mil lug and it's not that aggressive, but it handled the mud exceptionally well. So the outsole gripped really well on all the environments I ran the shoe on. I felt very confident underfoot. I never doubted that grip once. So really impressive stuff. The out the box comfort that you get from the Vective Infinite, you know, this really is a very comfortable and great fitting upper on this 
trail running shoe. And then you have that rocker in the midsole. That exaggerated rocker in the midsole of this shoe, it feels like the North Face have got that geometry just right. Uh, it really does feel like it's helping you along the way. It feels like it would be very efficient over distance and it makes running up hills feel very easy. So some really good features in both of these trail running shoes and a couple of things in both of them that I feel could be slightly improved. Firstly, with the North Face shoe, I think a slightly more aggressive lug pattern and a slightly deeper lug on that outsole would just offer a much better level of performance traction wise when it came to muddy trail conditions. As far as the Innovate shoe, a little bit more padding in that tongue in the right areas, a bit more padding around that ankle collar, I think would just make that upper a lot more comfortable over distance. But when it comes down to the shoes, because of that instant comfort of this shoe straight out of the box, the feel of this upper, the fit of this upper, it really does fit my foot shape like a glove. That well-engineered rocker in the midsole that made running feel very easy, and the fact that you get a six mil offset on the heel. Personally for me, that six mil offset is definitely a big feature in my running shoes, and I think it will really help me when I run some ultras in this shoe later in the year. The shoe I have to choose has to be the Vective Infinite from the North Face. But if you're that type of trail runner that likes a nice roomy toe box in their shoes, you feel you perform better in your trail running shoes off a zero drop, and you're looking for a trail running shoe that is gonna offer outstanding levels of traction on all surfaces, then maybe the Terra Ultra G270 is the shoe for you. So that is a wrap on another video at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed this comparison video and you found it helpful. If you did guys, don't forget, hit that like button, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I have left links for these two shoes in the description below if you wanna find out any more information. But also get involved guys. Are you running in either of these shoes? How do you find the performance? Have you run in both of these shoes and do you prefer one from the other? Let us know in the comments down below. Like I said earlier, we'll have some more great content on the channel very soon featuring Jedi sports physio Paul Coker. On the merchandise front, we've got some awesome new multi wraps coming to the channel. We've got three new designs. So all you guys that have been waiting for a run for adventure multi wrap, they will be in the merchandise store very soon. But for now guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the amazing support. And as always, stay safe and keep on running.